In this lesson we're going to be looking at polynomials some more and there's not a lot of algebra or there's not a lot of uh, mechanical concepts to go over in this lesson. Really this lesson is just about um, characteristics of polynomials and in particular it emphasizes how those characteristics play out in graphs. So the idea of characteristics of graphs is something you've been looking at for a number of years now. Um, we're just extending it to this new idea of a polynomial because now we have these higher order equations and yet there is still uh, there are some common concepts when it comes to those properties. So the first thing you're going to want to look at, the first thing you're going to want to pay attention to is going to be uh, what is the degree of the polynomial and in particular is that degree representing an even number or an odd number. So for example if I have something like y equals 3x cubed minus 7x plus 5. So I'm missing an x squared term here. doesn't actually matter. The important thing here is the highest degree term is the x cubed term. This is a polynomial because of the other rules we've talked about. And so that means this is a polynomial of order 3, which means it is an odd ordered polynomial. And so that sort of thing is going to tell us some of the behaviors. The other thing you want to pay attention to is going to be the leading coefficient of the polynomial. So in this case, the leading coefficient is the coefficient on the highest order term. So in this case, the leading coefficient would be positive 3. That positive 3 is going to tell you, first of all, the fact that it's positive or negative. That would tell you whether or not you have any reflections. Um, also, it's going to give you some idea about, um, I mean, the overall look of the polynomial, whether it's been stretched. But that's really not what we're focusing on here. So the big part about this leading uh, coefficient is going to be whether or not there's been a vertical reflection. And that's going to from there that's going to have other impacts because you do need to understand the parent functions for these different polynomials and then apply that reflection that should give you a good idea of how the graph is going to start or end and when I say that what I mean is for example a cubic in this case this is a cubic well the parent function for a cubic roughly speaking looks like that it starts in the bottom left and it ends in the top right if we look at this leading coefficient and the fact that it's positive, well, there's no reflection that's taken place there. So regardless of the differences that in shape that we might get because of this, in general, I'm still going to have something that starts in the lower left and finishes in the upper right. What happens in between here, I'm not pretending to know that part. But I do know, because this hasn't been reflected, I know it starts in the lower left and I know it ends in the upper right. Okay, so that leading coefficient is very important when it comes to characterizing our polynomials. Now turning points, that's a, a fairly new idea because with many of the graphs, with most of the graphs that you've encountered in previous courses, previous concepts, you haven't had to deal with this idea of a turning point. Trigonometric functions, sinusoidal functions, actually did have turning points in them, but we never really talked about them. So a turning point is whenever you change from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. And so, for example, if I do something like this, here I have decreasing, and at this point is when I change to increasing. And then at this point, I change back to decreasing, at this point, I change back to increasing, back to decreasing, back to increasing. And I think I'm going to tie that into what I'm talking about with extreme values because turning points occur at the what are known as the local extrema. So local extrema is any time, and I see I refer to that down here. So local extrema occur whenever you have turning points. So you've got a local minimum, a local maximum, a local minimum, a local maximum, a local minimum, and then from there. There's also this idea of an absolute maximum or minimum, which would be the absolute highest or lowest values in the polynomial. Now, in the case of this one that I very roughly sketched, does it have, first of all, an absolute maximum? 
Well, this arrow points up. This polynomial increases to an infinite extent. So there is no absolute maximum because it continues on forever. As far as absolute minimum, this is a local minimum, local maximum, local minimum, local maximum. And from the way I've drawn it, it actually does look like the, the absolute lowest point that this polynomial reaches is here. So this would be an absolute minimum. There's no absolute maximum, but there is an absolute minimum. And you can see that occurs at a turning point. Something else that I think it's worth mentioning here, just for you to have it in your mind, is there's another kind of, of wiggle that we can have in a graph. And I once again, I'm going to go back to the parent function for uh, cubic. When you look at something like this, you can see that it, this is increasing and then it kind of looks like it does something here and then it's still increasing. This is not a turning point. Depending on what's happening here, this is a, another type of point that we're going to look at more in the uh, calculus course, which is called a point of inflection. And in this case, you can see it's increasing and then it's still increasing. So when something like that occurs, just all I'm, I'm just mentioning it right now to try to encourage you to at least have it in the back of your mind and don't confuse that for a turning point. A turning point is where you very clearly change from decreasing to increasing or from increasing to decreasing. So something to keep in mind. Okay. And you can see here, just a, this is something to put in the back of your mind. I don't want you memorizing this as some kind of rule, but it's something through experience you'll realize even polynomials are always going to have an absolute. This is an even polynomial. It's, it is going up on the left side, it's going up on the right side, and that means that somewhere among all of these local extrema, there has to be a local minimum. If it was opening down, then there would be a, an absolute maximum. Odd polynomials, on the other hand, because they always have one side going up and one side going down, they never have absolute extrema. They only can have local extrema. The number of zeros. So we're well familiar with the idea of zeros. Zeros are where the graph crosses the x-axis. And again, if you think about the shape of these general graphs, an even polynomial might have zeros or it might have no zeros at all, just in the same way that a parabola. You can have a parabola that is above the x-axis. You can have a parabola that's on the x-axis. You can have a parabola that is below the x-axis, which would mean it crosses the x-axis twice. This is an even polynomial, so it's possible for it to have no zeros at all. On the other hand, because, for example, a cubic, because an odd polynomial always has one side that increases going up and the other side that is, is going to end up going down towards negative infinity and this one's going to positive infinity. Well, if you have a continuous function between positive infinity and negative infinity, at some point in time, it must cross at least one time. Now, in this case, what I've drawn is a polynomial that has three zeros, but Regardless of the number of zeros, if it's an odd polynomial, it has to have at least uh, one. Now, again, I'm just placing this in the back of your mind. When I'm talking about even polynomials and odd polynomials, I am referring to the order of the polynomials. And this is, an, again, context matters. I don't want you to confuse this with the idea of an even function which has to do with symmetry and an odd function which has to do with symmetry. Even and odd polynomials can have even and odd symmetry, but that would be looking at a different element or a different aspect of the polynomial's properties. And end behavior, I've actually referred to end behavior a number of times already in helping characterize these polynomials. So an even polynomial has identical behavior at each end. And you can see that with this parabola. So if it's opening, if it's going up to the left, it's also going to be going up to the right when it, on, on the ends. Meaning end behavior is when you've gone as far to the right or as far to the left as you can. No more turning points. 
then you look in and say what's it going to do as x gets increasingly large in the negative direction or in the positive direction. In the case of an odd polynomial you're going to have opposite end behaviors. If it's going up to positive infinity on one side it must be going to negative infinity on the other side. So let's just do a couple of very quick examples. Here we have a cubic so what is the degree of a cubic polynomial that is degree 3 the number of turning points I'm if I start as far left as I can go on the graph and I start go, traversing to the right you can see here I start off I'm increasing and then there's a turning point and then I'm decreasing so there's one turning point and now I'm decreasing and I continue and I get to here and it changes from decreasing to increasing so I have two turning points in this case. Now, the sign of A, meaning the leading coefficient, is it positive or negative? Does this shape, this overall shape, or in particular, notice how this thing ends up to the right and starts down to the left. How does that compare to the parent function of a cubic? And just to remind you, the parent function of a cubic looks like this. So has this been reflected? No, it has not, so the sign of A is positive. The, is this an even or odd degree? Well, its degree is 3. That's obviously an odd number. And what can we say about its n behavior? And we've talked about the notation for this in a previous note. As x approaches infinity, what does y do? As x approaches infinity, as I get larger and larger x values, my y value approaches infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, what does y do? If I go to the left here, then, sorry, I'm, I'm paying attention to the blue one there. I'm just going to take that blue out. And if I look at my original graph, as x goes to negative infinity, this is obviously also y is going to negative infinity. Here I have a quartic. A quartic means it's a degree 4. How many turning points do I have? This one's a little bit more subtle but if you look closely you can see I have decreasing and then there's a little turn here at the bottom so there's one turning point and now I'm increasing. Even though it's very subtle I'm increasing and then there's another turn about here where it changes back to decreasing and changes to increasing again. So it looks like I've got three turning points. The sign of A, quartix or any even degree polynomial, they all share that basic starting property with a parabola. And so a quartic actually, the parent function actually looks just like a parabola. The only difference, it's kind of subtle, is that it's a little bit wider at the bottom. It's it's almost got this kind of, it's not flat, I don't want you to think it's flat, but this base part is scooped out a little bit more widely in the parent function. So in this case you can see that the sign of A is positive because there is obviously no reflection here. Is this an even or odd degree? This is even. And the end behavior as x approaches infinity y also approaches infinity, positive, and on the negative side, as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches, now don't go on autopilot here, think this through, as x approaches negative infinity, y once again approaches positive infinity. And that's it for the lesson.